Miss Mulgar, our library teacher, says we have to write a junky report on a clunky book called Captain's Courageous. Well, how about that? I just saw the picture last week on TV, and they got a book out already. <laughs> hey, you could tell me how it comes out, and I wouldn't have to strain my eyes. Well, there's this guy, uh, uh, Spencer Tracy, and this kid, uh, Freddie uh, Bartholomew. I haven't read those names so far. Oh, they're always changing their names. You know, they fool around with them books. <laughs> Hi, Ernie. Play catch? Nah, I've got to write a junky report on a clunky book called Captain's Courageous. Captain's Courageous? Man, you struck it rich. I got a book report all written up from when I was a kid. I'm convinced. <laughs> and I got an A. Then I should get an A, if there's any justice. Sure. Let's all rich good grades. Play catch. Yeah. <laughs> Room 318, please. Hey, Bert. I got the job. At the sorority house, Kappa Kappa Theta. Sinks the deal. Yeah, that's Gene's sorority. I get paid for goofing around with Jane. How about that? <laughs> hey, I hear Dad's car outside. I'll get his okay, and then I'll call you right back. Okay. Oh, hi, Rob. Hi, Dad. You're just in time for a man-to-man -man family conference. A critical, but not serious. The senior resident advisor at the dorm has to know right away. Rob, before we get into this, could I put down my hat? Oh, well, sure. <laughs> now, the senior resident advisor at the dorm wants to know what right away? Whether I can move into the dorm with Bert Parker. Now, Bert's roommate had to leave school, and there's an opening for one student at the dorm, and, uh, well, Bert's a friend of mine. But I've got to let him know tonight, Dad, because there are a lot of other guys waiting. Oh, uh, well, hi, Charlie. Rob was just telling me that he wants to live over at school. Yeah, it's awfully important to me. But doesn't it seem a little silly, Rob? I mean, all the added expense. After all, it only takes you five minutes to go from here to the campus. Yeah, we're so close, every time a college kid sneezes, I yell, kazoom type. <laughs> well, Dad, uh... Do you remember when we talked about how great it would be for me to go to college and how it would be an experience I'd remember for the rest of my well, life? Yes, but well, I... Well, after a month of going to college and living here at home, it's like going to high school only with older kids. But, Rob, we just got through fixing up Mike's room for you. But, Dad, there may be a lot of great things to do at college, but I'm never on campus to find out. I hardly even get to see Jane. Jane? Yeah, she's here from Cleveland. She lives at the Kappa Kappa Theta house. I see. And she likes me to help her with my notes. We talk for a little while after poli sci class, but then we each go our separate ways. She to college life, me straight home. Rob, you don't want to do this because of a girl. Well, Dad, Jane is something else, but there's a lot more to it. The on-campus guys have all the fun. They get together and bone up, and they have intellectual discussions, stuff like that. There are dances and movies at the dorm. It's kind of like a club, a club that I don't belong to. Rob, uh, how much will it cost to live at the dorm? Well, the dorm charges $95 a month, room and board. Well, that's what I mean, Rob. That's pretty expensive, isn't it? I mean, when you just live a couple of blocks away. Yeah, I know, Dad, but it'd be worth it. It won't cost you a cent. I'll pay for everything. I already landed a job as a hasher. They give me free meals and $10 a month. I have a second job as a lab helper in the chemistry department. That's another $50. Will you have time to study? Oh, sure, Dad. I've got it all figured out in my schedule. It'll be a ball. Well, Rob, of course, I understand how important it is to go away to school, but... Oh, thanks, Dad. You know what? You always understand my problems. <laughs> I didn't realize I gave him a definite answer. <laughs> hey, this is great. Yeah. Uh... No. Oh, here, wait, I'll close the door behind you. All right. Well, this is, uh, this is my bed here. Can you get it? Let me... There. I gotta put my foot... There. there you go. Ah! Now, uh... This is my bed? No, uh, yeah, this is... Wait a minute. Now, this is... This is your bed. This, this is my bed. And, uh, that's your closet over there. Uh, here, Robbie, you your closet. And... Your wait, dresser. Wait, wait, what's the... Oh, just a minute. Wait, 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 your dresser? That's your desk right there. Wait a minute. Okay, just move your foot. This is really the last. The last of a college man. Yeah. <laughs> you know something, Charlie? I guess it's silly, but the house seems kind of empty. 
I'll throw some sweaters on the floor, clean out the icebox, and play a couple of noisy records, and we won't know he's gone. <laughs> You gonna be staying up for a while? Yeah. Great classes tomorrow. You mind if I turn the radio down? Turn the radio down? Robbie, I can't study without it. I can hardly hear it as it is. Don't get used to it. Okay. so early. No, I, I've got a test at 8 and I've got a cram for it for an hour. Oh, great. I don't have a class until 11 and I was up to 3 this morning. Uh -huh. so, so I'll be beat all day now. and ask him where he left his baseball club? He probably took it with him. He took everything else. But don't phone him. Remember, he's away at school. <laughs> okay, Uncle Charlie, I won't phone him. Why don't you write him a letter? Because by the time he gets it and writes me the answer, the game will be over. So play barehanded. We got to go along with Robbie in this thing. He's having the time of his life. <laughs> You need some more water. Okay. We can't have this mixing up with fraternities. We have always been affiliated with the. Hey, I'll save you a great big piece of pie, okay? Oh, Robbie, you're so thoughtful. Hey, were my poli sign notes any help? Oh, a big help. But you've got to do something about your handwriting. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll try to write a little bit better next time. <laughs> hey, Gina, what do you think about a date tonight? Oh, I'd love it, Robbie, but uh, by the time you get through here, it'll be too late. Oh, yeah. yeah well, that's the breaks. sit down later. Because we don't. Here, this is yours. Eat fast. Lady, you'll be so busy washing the dishes and washing the pots and pans and cleaning the floor. You gotta grab something on the run or you'll starve to death. <laughs> oh. taking a walk and all of a sudden I looked up and there I was on the campus. Oh, accidental, of course. Oh, sure. Uh, I left some chicken soup on the desk in your room. Oh, do you always go for a walk with chicken soup? Well, it, uh, it happened to be in my hand when I walked out. I wanted to see how you were getting along. How are you getting along? Just great. 
Uh, straight to Swamp X? You got to go to college for that? Well, I, I take it in my stride. I, I better get back to work. I've got to get to some pots and pans. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Come on, come on. Hold it. That's no way to swab a deck. See? <clears throat> you got to use big strokes. See? Oh, yeah. Uh huh? Well, it's more deck, see? Oh! <laughs> Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I'm sorry, sorry too, but you ought to watch it. You're, you're tracking up my deck. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, that was Mrs. Harper, the house mother. <laughs> what happened? I passed by Baker Hall. I didn't remember that we were having a feud with them. <laughs> They drop water bags on us, and we drop water bags on them. That's life on a big campus. Yeah. As soon as I dry off, do you want to go down to the cafeteria and have a cup of coffee and a sandwich with me? Well, I got so busy hashing that I never did have time to eat. No, thanks. I had some chicken soup. Chicken <laughs> soup? Yeah, somebody left it on the table. It was real good, too. Uncle Charlie will be glad to hear it. Oh, was that for you, Ronnie? I'm sorry. It's okay. Forget it. Hey, is all the food at your house that good? Uh -huh. It's great. Well, Uncle Charlie's just a great cook. Do you have a room of your own there? Yeah, sure. All to myself. Boy, it's twice his size. It's a beauty. Gosh, you must have a pretty big house. Yeah. Well, it's... Such a call, real, real comfortable, you know? Nice and warm and well, kind of friendly and, well, homelike. Yeah, just like here. <laughs> well, be... well, I guess I'll study for a while, then I'll go on over to the lab and clean up those acid pans for tomorrow. Then I'll come back and I'll finish up my English lit. You know, there'd be time for everything if I just didn't have to sleep. <laughs> come in. Hi, Rob. Hey, Chip. Hi. How are you? Hey, man. Good, all right. Hey, hi, Ernie. How are you? Good hi, to Rob. see you. We were taking a walk, and all of a sudden we looked up and... We were on the campus. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is my roommate, Bert. Bert, yeah. these are my brothers. Chip How you doing? Pleasure, Hi. boy. This is our dog, Tramp. Hi, Tramp. Tramp. How are you? Hey, this is pretty neat. Small, but neat. <laughs> you sleep standing up, Rob? <laughs> well, I sleep in this bed, and this is Bert's here. Hey, y'all, uh, you guys, I'll get out of here and give you a little room. Okay. Pleasure meeting you guys. Nice meeting you. Bye, boy. Well, uh, how you guys been, anyhow? Oh, okay. Good. We miss your baseball club. Oh, I, I put it up in a, in a box up in the attic, you know, with some other junk. I don't think I want to go away to school. <laughs> hey, Ernie, we'd better get going home or Uncle Charlie will yell at us. So long, Rock. Okay. Bye, Rock. Oh, wait, here. Give this to Uncle Charlie. It belongs to him. And tell him that the chicken soup was, uh, well, great. <laughs> okay. We'll tell Dad we saw you and you're looking okay. Yeah, and tell him that I'm, I'm really living it up here in college. Come on, Come on, boy. Come on, Tramp. So long, Tramp. Go on, Chip. Bye, Ernie. Bye. <laughs> told me I'd find you up here in the lab. I was out taking a stroll after dinner, and uh, I looked up and found myself on campus, though I thought I'd say hello. So did Uncle Charlie. Oh, he was here, too. Chip, Ernie, and Tramp also. <laughs> well, we're all thinking about you, wondering how you're doing. You look a little tired. Well, I guess I have been burning the candle at both ends, you know, really living it up. How's the hashing job going at the sorority house? Oh, just great, Dad. Art and me serving 30 gorgeous girls, including Jane. Imagine getting paid. Sounds fine. Oh, it's just terrific, Dad. Well, after I'm finished here, I go back to the dorms and uh, 
study for a while, and then have a bull session with some great guys. Well, you know, Dad, you went away to school, too. Sure. Well, I uh, just want to say hello. I'll say, uh, if you manage to find some time, uh, maybe between semesters or during spring vacation, uh, drop over to the house, pay us a visit, huh? Charlie will give you a home-cooked dinner, and uh, we'd all like to see you. Well, uh, take it easy. <sighs> I guess you can't very well take it easy, but uh, don't work too hard, huh? Good night, Mark. Good night, Dad. Just say goodbye to the gang for me. Yeah, yeah, I will. Say well, right? Charlie, Ernie, Chip. Yeah. Come here a minute, will you? The hey guys, that uh, that was Robbie on the phone, and uh, well, we all have been dropping in on him pretty often over there at school, and uh, he says it's kind of embarrassing. And besides, he says it spoils the whole idea. So, uh, well, you can understand how he feels, huh? Yeah, I must have embarrassed him when I clobbered the house mother. I just thought she was a student that was left back a lot. <laughs> well, from now on, let's just figure that he's going to some college uh, a thousand miles away. Hmm? I wonder when he's going to write home for money. <laughs> no, he, you understand what I mean. Okay, Dad. Darn it. Uh, Ernie. You had it? What do you mean, uh, darn it? Well, I was going to go back to see Robbie, so he could help me with my book report. That Captain Courageous stuff? I thought you did it a couple of days ago. I gotta do another one. Miss Mulga remembered it. Miss Mulga remembered it? From when Chip wrote it when I was a kid. You mean you copied an old book report of Chip's? Yeah. Ernie, you know I expect you to do your own work. I did. I copied every word by myself. Nobody helped me. <laughs> that isn't what I mean. Ernie, when you try to pass someone else's work off as your own, that's cheating, isn't it? I guess so. In the first place, it's dishonest, and in the second place, you don't learn anything. Okay, Dad. I won't do it anymore. The teacher didn't believe it anyway. Didn't believe what? I told her it was a coincidence that my book report was the same as Chip's. I told her it must have been because we have the same father. You were dead, huh? Yeah. And that was a fib, wasn't it? I guess so. Well, I hope you've learned your lesson. I sure did. I won't try to fool clunky old Miss Mulger anymore. <laughs> Hello, Robbie. Oh, hi, Jane. Uh, Robbie Douglas, Mr. Miller. Douglas? How do you do, Mr. Miller? He's my guest, and we're in a hurry, so please bring dinner right away. Sorry to make you chop chop, old boy, but um, we have plans. Jane's got a guest. Yeah? Who? Uh, Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller? He's the instructor in my poli sci class. Real bright guy. PhD. Oh, no fooling. <laughs> you know something? He looks like a PhD. <laughs> Jane was your girl. She was. 
until she got a D in poli sci using my notes and the romance. She'll do better now. I'll get her, Steve. Hello. I'm Bert Parker, Robbie's roommate. Well, how about that? Come in, I'm a Uncle Charlie. How do you do? And uh, this is his father, Mr. Douglas. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Bert. Douglas. Yes, it's just the way I described it. I actually recognize the house from outside. Is something wrong with school? No. I thought, well, I guess it's a long shot, but Robbie said that he moved into my soul room. And since Robbie's living in the dorms, that my soul room is practically vacant. Well, that's right. I thought maybe you'd be willing to rent it. Rent it, uh, Bert? To whom? Well, to me. <laughs> well, I thought maybe you could see your way clear to let me move in. Well, Bert, it's nice of you to want to move in here with us, but uh, I really think we ought to keep Robbie's room available to him, just in case he should want to come home for a weekend or something. Yeah. Well, I just thought I'd try. I'm sorry, Bert. Well, you know, Robbie should really move back home anyway. And give up all that college life? Man, is he homesick. Five minutes away and he's homesick? I thought he was too busy to get homesick. Well, bye, Mr. Douglas. Goodbye. Bye, Uncle Charlie. Goodbye. Oh, and thanks for the chicken soup. You're welcome. <laughs> and drop in for dinner anytime. And bring your friend, Robbie. Okay, bye. <laughs> Goodbye, bye. Well, get on the phone and tell the kid to come home where he belongs. Well, I can't very well do that, Charlie. He's not a kid anymore. He's a college man. Hello? Yeah, he's here. Steve? Long distance, Washington. Thank you. Hello. Oh, yes, Mr. Hendricks. Yes, I'm clear at the moment. I will be until the 14th. How long will you need me? Uh-huh. Well, that ought to work out fine, then. All right, I'll leave on the 9 o'clock plan in the morning. And you'll meet me at the airport. Right, I'll see you. Goodbye, Mr. Hendricks. Oh. Well, I have to fly out to Washington first thing in the morning. When you get there, ask some of those big brains how to get Robbie home. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they can help us with this, Charlie. Why not? Is it easier to get a man to the moon than a kid home from the dawn? <laughs> you know, uh, maybe if we both had to go someplace, we could tell Robbie we need him here at home to take care of Ernie and Chip. What if I just get sick and we send for Robbie? It'll be like he's making a big sacrifice for us. Yeah. Or uh, maybe we could... Hey, 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 Robbie! Hey, Robbie. What'd you do, get kicked out of school or something? No, I'm just moving back home. You been away or something? You uh, plan on staying here with us for a while now? Yeah, I, I thought I'd move home where the peanut butter is handier. <laughs> That's good, because we missed you, to some extent. But thanks a lot. Hey, you guys want to help me upstairs with this stuff? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Boy, uh, boy, you know, the guy who said there's no place like home really knew what he was talking about. Uh, now that you're home, dinner in five minutes, and wash your hands. <laughs> good thing you didn't rent that room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got it. Yeah? Hi, is Robbie home? Well, yes, yes, he is. He just went upstairs. Rob! Hi, you guys. Hey, this is my dad, Marco Chuck. Come on in. <laughs> Hello, girl. <laughs> and work around to the back. How come? Operation Cleanup. 
A phone call from your dad. He's coming home tonight instead of Friday. Say, great. Yeah, sure. So we got six hours to clean up this place. We had six weeks. Dad was away to get it in a mess. I just remembered. I, I can't. I've got this date at 4 o'clock. All leaves are canceled. Emergency alert. But what about Chip? Why can't he do it? Chip's a special emergency all by himself. I sent him down for a haircut. No kidding. Do you mean he's finally getting that bird's nest lopped off? Uncle Charlie said Dad wouldn't be able to tell which is Chip and which is Tramp. Yeah. Tramp's hair is a good two inches shorter. And his nose is full. I'll make the jokes. You get with the windows. And have uh, Chip report to me when he comes back. I don't think I'll be able to recognize Chip. I already forgot what his ears look like. <laughs> After me. I'm number 10. I come after you then. Boy, yours is sure long. Must be an inch longer than mine. And I started two weeks before you. Well, I guess I eat more vitamins or something. See that guy in the chair now? He's vice president of the Kingpins. Kid, wouldn't you prefer an Ivy League or a crew cut? Come off it, Sid. I just want an ordinary haircut. Let me cut it short. Back and sides. Are you kidding? But you said that you were... I said I want an ordinary haircut. Leave it the way it is, in the front, back, and sides. The front, back, and the sides? So what do I cut? Who said anything about cutting? Just shape it and comb the bangs down in front. <laughs> Another couple of weeks. Yours will be longer than his, too. No such luck. My Uncle Charlie told me to get mine cut. On account of my father's coming home tonight. He didn't mean cut, cut, did he? Well, he didn't exactly say, but... You want to look like Squaresville? Like you were running for Congress or working in a bank or something? Well... What's the point of all that work, letting it go off? You're going to cut it off. Anyway, the kingpins won't take you if you cut it off. Yeah, I know. But my Uncle Charlie will kill me if I just get it shaped. You know something, Chip? You worry too much about what your family thinks. Well, I gotta live with them. But you don't go around with them, that's the thing. You gotta be like the guys you go around with, don't you? Yeah. I bet your dad would understand. He wouldn't want you going around looking like some kind of an oddball, would he? <laughs> no, but... Okay, then. Number 10. <laughs> How about it, kid? An inch and a half all around? Just shape it and comb the bangs down. I want to bury these in a time capsule. Someday people will dig it up and wonder what it was used for. <laughs> Uncle Charlie? It's about time you got back. Your dad will be here in... You gotta be kidding me. Well, what's the matter? Didn't I give you a buck twenty-five for a haircut? Well, sure, but... You lose it in a crap game on the way to the barber shop? <laughs> no, I gave it to the barber. For what? You're shaving. All the guys wear it like this. Oh. oh. <laughs> you mean is that way on purpose? Well, sure. There's this club at school called the Kingpins, and all the big wheels are in it, and they started it. Yeah? Well, I know who's going to end it. Your father. <laughs> and you'll be lucky if he doesn't use a lawnmower. Okay, okay. And I'm not laying out a dime for curlers, either. Hi, Chip. Hi. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, what? You don't mean it, do you? I mean, you got somebody else's head on by mistake, right? Turn it off, Rob. All the guys wear their hair like this. Wait till Dad gets a load of that, boy. You'll be lucky if he doesn't use the hedge clippers. Aha. Uh -huh. I said hi. I know. I 
slid it back. Thought maybe you didn't hear me or see me or something. I saw you. Oh. Didn't you notice anything? Nope. Why? Oh. Thought maybe you just noticed something about me. No, I didn't notice anything about you, because I'm used to you that way. <laughs> Stay out of Dad's sight when he's holding his power saw. <laughs> Dad! Hey, you guys, it's Dad! Hi, Dad. Oh, well, welcome home. Well, nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you, Travel Boy? You look lost anyway. Hey, you fellas look great. Where's Chip? I got a nice dinner for you in the kitchen. Good, I'm ready for a home-cooked meal. Uh, where's Chip? Chip who? <laughs> what do you mean, Chip who? Where is he? Uh, he's upstairs in his room. Oh, where? Well. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Welcome home, Mr. Well, Chip, uh, what's new? Oh, nothing much. Except I think I noticed some whiskers trying to grow on my chin. You think I could use your razor on Saturdays? Uh, well, sure, Chip. Well, thanks, Dad. Welcome home. Hey. Here comes the lawnmower. Hedge clippers. Power saw. <laughs> Three hairs on his chin, and he wants to use your razor. And on the opposite end of his noodle, he's got enough hair to stuff a mattress. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing is that you didn't say anything about it. I figured you were in shock. Well, I admit I was a little uh, stunned. And that is the understatement of the year. But, uh, Charlie, I think this is something Chip's going to have to work out for himself. It's just a sort of uh, a rebellion. Against what, exactly? I'm not sure. Okay, so it's a rebellion. So call out the Marines and get the situation under control. <laughs> Uh, Chip just feels he has to follow the crowd. Now, if I interfere, he's going to resent it. I don't think it'll be too long before Chip breaks away from this ridiculous fad all by himself. He's got a pretty good head on his shoulders. How can you tell under all that fur? <laughs> you know, when I was Chip's age, there was one point where uh, I wouldn't go out of the house unless I was wearing the dirtiest pair of corduroys in town. That was the big thing with the kids then. Nobody dared put them in the laundry. But I uh, finally got enough confidence in myself to uh, dress the way I wanted to instead of following the gang. Chip will see the light. How's he going to see the light with all that hair in his eyeball? Cheddar <laughs> uh, cheese or uh, peanut butter? All right, Charlie. I'm going up and read a little while. I wouldn't worry too much about it. <laughs> he says, don't worry. We're the only family on the block that's got a kid that looks like little Lord Fauntleroy. And he says, don't worry about it. <laughs> You know, sometimes I think you're the only one in this family I understand. <laughs> oh, Steve, here are those Comstock papers. I'd like you to look them over. Oh, fine. Okay. Well, you must be glad to be home after your long trip. <laughs> I certainly am. Everything all right at your place? Uh, yeah, everything's uh, fine. <laughs> the boy's all okay. Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I steal a cup of your coffee? Oh, go right ahead. So. Matter of fact, I'm enjoying it. Say, Steve, uh, you're a middle boy, uh, Chip. He's about the same age as my Jeff, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff's 13, isn't he? <laughs> Quite an age, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. I suppose Chip is like all the other teenagers. Well, I mean, a little uh, car crazy, girl conscious, you know, normal kid. Well, yeah, yeah I, I'd say he was. <laughs> Oh, so, you know, he's working here at the plant after school now. Pretty responsible youngster, if I do say so myself. Well, uh, all boy, of course, in every way. Dad? I'm here when you need me, Dad. <laughs> oh, boy, in every way, except that. Dave, have you tried to do anything about it? I mean, try to do anything about it. Well, naturally. Well, what? Well, I did what any father of a kid with ridiculous hair would do. Well, what did you do? 
I went straight to a psychologist. <laughs> psychologist? Uh, who did you go to? Well, our company man right here, Dan Clark. Oh, yeah. yeah. Steve, you don't mean to tell me you're having the same trouble with Chip. <laughs> yeah. Murder, isn't it? Oh. His mother keeps after me to lay down the law. But I don't want my kid to hate me because I force him to be different from his friends. That's why I'm consulting Clark. Uh, what did Dr. Clark say to you? Well, go to him, Steve. He's, he's a fine man, a truly great psychologist. Well, what did he tell you to do? I, I don't know. I couldn't understand a word he said. <laughs> That's why I want you to go. Well, Dave, I think I'll put it off for a while. I have a feeling that Chip will work it out himself. Work it out himself? When? How much longer can you put up with a son that looks like a mushroom? <laughs> Charlie, I wore those dirty corduroy pants for about uh, three months, I think. Steve, if you don't put your foot down, no telling what he'll do next. Maybe start wearing hair ribbons or something. Oh, Charlie, I don't think he's going to go any farther than this. Not that this isn't far enough. <laughs> If you're Robbie's date, he said that... Chip! One of the guys put peroxide on it for me. How about that? Yeah, how about that, Charlie? <laughs> okay. Now we clobber him. Oh, no, Charlie. Now we just let him think about it for a while. But, Steve, if you don't... Boy, are you ever going to get it from Dad? Says so you. Hear him coming upstairs? So he's coming upstairs. Yeah, well, when he walks slow like that, he's trying to think of something to say. <laughs> See, what did I tell you? I told Chip you were coming up to talk to him. Well, as a matter of fact. Look, Dad, if you're going to chew me out and stuff, can't I go and get a drink of water or something? <laughs> I was just going to sleep. Well, Chip, I didn't come up here to, uh, as you say, chew you out. I came up to say goodnight, but, uh, well, as long as you brought it up, let's uh, go into this hair business. Uh. Guy, Dad, I know you don't like it, but all the guys are doing it. And if you tell me I can't, well, I'll look rectangular. Rectangular? Oh, oh well, I wouldn't want you to go around looking rectangular. It'd be an improvement on the way it looks now. Really? I'm asleep. Well, then you better take your glasses off. Now, well, Chip, uh, I realize it's important to you not to be different from your friends. I know you don't want to stand out from the rest of the crowd. That's it, Dad. There's this club at school called the Kingpins, and all the guys who are anybody are in it. And you have to bleach your hair and wear it long to even get asked to be a member. I see. Well, it's up to you, Chip. After all, it's your hair. Well, this guy who bleached me said the Kingpins will take me into the club for sure. Well, I just hope these Kingpins are really worth following, Chip. If you're sure they are, well, go ahead. But be sure you're just following and not being pushed because you're afraid to be different. Nobody's pushing me. It's an honor to be a kingpin. Okay. All I've got to say about it. Good night, Dad. Good night, Chipper. Good night, Dad. Yeah? If I do dumb stuff like Chip, are you going to not get mad at me? Like you're not getting mad at Chip? I'll try not. Swell. I'll remind you when the time comes. Good night, fellas. Good night, Dad. Good night, Dad. I think Mr. Welch's son, Jeff, resents the younger brother, Tom, and is expressing his resentment by adopting his unusual hairstyle. Maybe your answer, too, Steve. Since you adopted Ernie, well, Chip's no longer the youngest. You mean uh, Chip's letting his hair grow long and bleaching it because he resents Ernie? Why doesn't he just do something simple like uh, punching him in the nose? <laughs> well, the civilized family group doesn't allow that direct to protest, Steve. But if the resentment is there, it has to break out in some form. In this case, hair. Well, it sounds like a reasonable explanation. Uh, what do you recommend? Oh, I'd devote some extra attention to the problem, child. Reassure him of his importance in the family circle. Concentrate your interest on him. Direct questions at the dinner table to him. 
I, I think that's your solution, gentlemen. I see. Well, I'll uh, alert the rest of the family. It's certainly worth a try. Well, I'm going to do it. Doc, I think you've taken care of the problem for both of us. Well, I hope so. Thanks very much. There's just one more thing I'd like you to bear in mind. Uh, what is that? I haven't talked to Jeff and Chip. And there's the ever-present possibility I could be completely wrong. <laughs> well, Chip, uh, how did everything go at school today? Okay. You gonna try out for baseball next semester, Chip? I guess. I got two hits in softball at recess today. Well, Chip, you ought to be doing well on the baseball team. I mean, with that great throwing here... Uh, Arm of <laughs> Could be. One of my hits was a double. There's a lot more soup, Chip. Uh, how about a little extra? No, thanks, Uncle Charlie. I don't even think I can finish this. Hey, Chip, I just thought of something. I can't use that green sweater of mine anymore, because if you wear green on campus, they throw you in the fountain. <laughs> uh, throw you in the fountain? Yeah, because the green is state's color. So if you want, I'll give you the sweater. It's a good one, too. Cost me 12 bucks. Thanks. It was my first hit that was a double. Then the second time I was up... Ernie, don't hog the conversation. <laughs> Give Chip a chance once more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chip, you can have my green socks, too. No, thanks, Rob. I don't need any socks. Dad? I have to be at John Dunning's house at 7.30 to get our initiation job for tomorrow from the Kingpins. So could I do my homework now and eat a sandwich or something when I get back from John's? Well, uh... Yes, I suppose so, Chip. Excuse me. Now you can talk to me if you want to. Oh, well, Ernie, it, uh, it isn't that we weren't talking to you, but... Uh... Oh, it's okay. Only when all of a sudden everybody starts talking to just one guy, trying to give him sweaters and socks and soup and stuff, everybody really knows it's on account of his hair. Can I have some more soup, Uncle Charlie? Help yourself. <laughs> Get your initiation assignments last night. You know what I have to do? Set back the clock in the school office so all the bells ring ten minutes late. I got a crummy job. Steal a gym teacher's girdle. <laughs> What's yours? You put green dye in the soap dispenser in the faculty washroom. Great. So when they wash their hands, they'll get green all over. Hey, and how about if they wash their faces with soap? Can't you see old X squared Williams with a green puss? Yeah. <laughs> Guy, those kingpins are the greatest. They really get the ideas. Hey, what'd they get Phil to do? Hey, what's with the lights? Somebody must have pulled a switch or something. What's going on? Hey, you guys, that's Phil. No kidding. He had to put a blinker fuse in the school fuse box. <laughs> hey, let's get out of here. Jeff, what do you mean, keep calm? How do you expect me to keep calm when you were late because you were caught trying to fly the gym teacher's girdle from the flagpole? I told you, Dad. I had to. Had to? Now, what do you mean, had to? Dave, I'd better bring these things back later. No, stick around, Steve. I mean, I had to. It was my assignment for getting into the kingpins. Oh, kingpin, you. <laughs> What's happening to this generation? Will you tell me what is happening to this generation? Gosh, Dad, I don't see anything so bad about it. You're always talking about the time you put Limburger cheese in the school band tuba. Now, look here, that's an entirely different kind of thing. An imaginative, harmless prank. Is it my fault if they didn't give me imaginative junk to do? Just because Chip and the others got good things. Jeff, uh, what good things did Chip get to do? I don't think I'm supposed to tell. Never mind thinking. Tell him. After school, Chip's supposed to put green dye in the soap dispensers in the faculty washroom. So when the teachers wash, they'll get all gooped up with green. Well, Dave, I'll see you later. A fad is one thing, but vandalism is something else. Now, Steve. Steve, don't get excited. Maybe you want to see Dan Clark about the right way to handle Chip. I know the right way to handle Chip. I'm going to bend him over with one hand, and I'm going to apply the other hand to the exact center of the seat of his pants. <laughs> Where's Chip? Hold it, hold it. Wet deck. Is Chip home? No. Time to build up his security some more? I'm not interested in his security. I just want to know where he is. Well, when he came in and asked me where to buy green dye for some school project, 
I told him Holman's Drugstore. Charlie, Charlie, you call Holman's Drugstore and tell him not to sell Chip any green dye. And uh, have him wait there. What's the big deal about green dye? Suppose he... Oh, no. If that kid comes home with his hair dyed green, I'm going to resign from the Sons of Ireland. <laughs> Okay, young fella. Is that short enough? Fine. It's my original color, too. No, no. Keep your money. This one's on the house. But uh, it's my pleasure. Gosh, thanks. Dad, what are you doing here? Well, hi there, Chip. I uh, just thought I could use a haircut. <laughs> Same here. It's about time I gave my ears some hair. Yeah, looks fine. Right. You gave him a nice haircut, Joe. Say, it looks like I'll have a little wait here. I'd better drop back tomorrow. Huh? Sure, sure, Mr. Douglas. Uh, Chip, I've got the car outside. Can I give you a lift? Well, swell. Anything else you have to do while you're uh, downtown? No, I was going to get something at the drugstore. But I decided I'd rather get a haircut instead. Oh, oh fine. Well, uh, Joe. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. It's my treat. Now, look, I won't let you do that. I want you to take that. Yeah. And believe me, it's worth ten times that. <laughs> Where's breakfast? It'll be ready. It'll be ready. He always hollers five minutes before because he thinks we won't get here till later. You usually don't. Where's Ernie? I'm here, too. All right, now hold this, Sam. What happened to the pan? Cut the legs off. Kids going in? All the guys are doing it in my class. It's the big thing. Steve, Ernie, you're not going to school this morning and cut off pants. Is that clear? Dad, you said you wouldn't get mad at me when I do dumb stuff. But you didn't get mad at Chip. Well, I changed my mind. I repeat, no cut-off pants, period. But what about that junk? How it's okay to follow the crowd? Only when you're mature, like me. <laughs> that isn't fair. Look, Ernie, if Dad yells at you, you can tell everybody. Then you don't have to worry about doing all the goofy junk other kids think of. Yeah. And from now on, let's discuss it before we cut off the pants, okay? Yes, sir. And believe me, Yuri, being yellow, it's a lot easier than having to make up your own mind. Well, in that case, suppose I uh, make it easier for everyone. Eat your oatmeal. <laughs> Get this part. Ernie, could you fly to London and have a talk with the Prime Minister? The British government wants to borrow you. Oh, what do you know? Uh, when do you leave for London? I can't this week. School. Oh, you're all tied up, huh? No, that's too bad. You know, I, uh, I like that letter better than the one you got the other day from that Italian actress. Yeah, I was surprised she fell in love with a nine-year-old kid. <laughs> I was surprised she wrote to you in English. Yeah. Well, she explained it all to me. She said she didn't want her husband to be able to read it. Oh, I see. Well, Ernie, when you answer the question, you give my regards, won't you? And will do. Have a good time tonight, Dad. Thanks, Ann. See you at breakfast. Yeah. Ernie still bothering you with those crazy letters he keeps writing to oh, himself? no bother. That was a lot of fun. That was the uh, second letter he's gotten from the president, you know. Well, he's just doing it to get attention. Uh, well, I know that. 
And he's getting attention, so it's uh, working out fine. Well, Dad, I, I still think that Ernie has some deep-seated problem, but, uh, well, you handle it your own way. I just came in to tell you that you won't have any problem with Joanne. Joanne? Joanne Edwards. I met her at the prom a few weeks ago. Remember? I flipped. We've been going steady. It's a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was I supposed to worry about? Just that this might be the big one. And, uh, well, marriage and dropping out of college and all that jazz. Marriage? You mean you and this, uh, what's her name? What I'm trying to say, Dad, is that love or no love, Joanne and I both agree we're too young to get married. And we both want to get a good education first. Oh, that's, that's fine, Ron. Well, I guess I can go out to dinner, uh, confident that you and Ernie are all right, at least for tonight. <laughs> of course, the jury's still out on Chip. <laughs> See you. Okay, night, Dad. I'll come by and talk after dinner. We'll go to the library and crack open some books. Oh, Robbie, you can actually come right to the door. You know, you're the first boy my dad has ever improved. Isn't it great? And my dad likes everything I tell him about you. You're sensible, that's what you are. Very sensible. But in a nice way. Thanks. See ya. Okay, bye. Eileen, Hi, has Bob. Professor Summers gone yet? Well, sure, he left a few minutes ago. Oh, sure. I hadn't realized how late it had gotten. He was supposed to give me some American Civ notes. Now I've got to find somebody who has them, otherwise I'll get creamed in the test Monday. Well, I've got them right here. I'll give them to you. Come on. Oh, great. Well, uh, Eileen, why don't we just go someplace where I can copy them? Well, I can't, Robbie. I've got to get home in a hurry. Well, it wouldn't take long. You could call your mother and explain. Well, it's not my mother I have to explain to. It's my husband. Your husband? Well, my name is Mrs. James Borden Gray. Where are those notes? You're married to Bored Gray? What's wrong with that? Well, nothing, except he's such a nut. In high school, he spent half his life in the principal's office for flying his laundry from a flagpole and stuff like that. I take it you knew my husband. Well, just to hear the word husband in the same sentence as Borden Gray shakes me. I know where I left the notes. Well, they're in the hamper. Well, why don't you come back to the apartment with me? You can copy them there. All right. Borden, I'd love to see you. And you can meet Jimmy. And who's Jimmy? Our baby. <laughs> Hi, dear. Hi, honey. Honey, I brought home another man because I'm tired of talking to you. Thanks, guys. Robbie. Bored? Rob. Robbie Douglas. Hi. How are you? Okay. Well, that's the same old guy, all right. The way she's been describing you, I, I thought it was somebody else. Well, how long can a guy go on riding bikes through the girls' gym or having barbecues on top of a car? <laughs> How's Jimmy? He's sound asleep. He yelled when the beef trust upstairs was doing her exercises, but he's all right now. Oh, that's good. Well, I'll go make some coffee, and, and then I'll check him over. Well, how are you? I'm fine. I don't want to break up your studies. No, that's okay. I always take a coffee break when Eileen comes home from her last class. Mm. Come on, let's sit down. Okay, thanks. Boy, I, I still can't get over you two being married and, and calling each other dear and all that. I mean, the, I know how old you are. Well, sometimes Jimmy in there makes me feel older. Doesn't having to take care of him foul up your studies? That's the weird part about it. My grades have gotten better. I take the two o'clock feeding, and while he's eating, I do my calculus. Oh, I get it. You both work on your formulas together, huh? <laughs> Fed Chip and Ernie. And there's a casserole of macaroni in the refrigerator for you. I'm on my way to a lodge meeting. Well, I may go out later. Have you got a clean shirt for me to wear? You bet. Dry it in the laundry. All you have to do is iron it. Iron it? Iron it. You want shirts to jump out of the laundry ready to wear? Get a magician or a wife. Magician or a wife. <laughs> Hi, is Joanne there? Oh, uh, tell her this is Robbie Douglas calling, sir. Hi, Joanne. 
Yeah, I got the notes. I borrowed them from Eileen Gray. Hey, uh, did you know that she was married? Married? Eileen Gray? Well, she's the same age I am. She's married, got a baby, and you ought to see their place. Yeah, I can imagine. Wouldn't it be awful trying to keep up with your classes while you're taking care of a baby in a house? Well, Joanne, believe me, they've got it made. It's sure a lot better than a teenage rat race. You really think so? I've got to go, honey. I mean, uh, Joanne. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Hi, Rob. Hey, Dad. Uh, Dad, how old were you when you got married? Well, I was older than you are, considerably. Boy, things happen so much faster these days. I gotta get to the books. Uh, Rob. Last night you assured me. Oh, Dad, a man can change. Like when that extra special girl comes along. You know, your chemistry. Man. But Rob, uh, marriage is something that requires a lot of thought. I mean, uh, can stand a lot of investigation. Oh, I absolutely agree, Dad. Yeah. Let's see you later. Uh, yeah. Between your housework and your homework, how did you find time to bake this? Well, I study at home in the afternoons. Cooking's no problem. You see, Joanne? It works. But it's peaceful and quiet here. Well, what about the baby? Doesn't he make a lot of noise? My son Jimmy's a very practical man. Give him plenty to eat, enough sleep, and a dry wardrobe. He'll keep quiet. Joanne, would you like to see Jimmy? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, come on. Well, Borden... Hi, Mrs. Plum. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, nothing you can do to help. Well, take care of yourself, and we'll see you the week after next. Goodbye. Problem? Babysitter. She's got a cold. Can't be near the baby. Well, here go the weekend plans. Well, Borden, I'd be glad to babysit for you. I couldn't ask you to do that. A whole weekend? Well, it'd be a pleasure. I've got a modern government's paper due Monday, and if I tried to do it in that birdcage I live in, I'd never get it done. Well, have you ever taken care of a baby before? I mean, he's only four months old. I know I could do it. It was just common sense, and I could get Joanne to help me. She could come over Saturday evening for a few hours. Candlelight dinner, soft music. Well, I guess you could always call Mrs. Dunbar across the hall in case something happened to Jimmy. I, I'm a very reliable fellow. And it would be great to spend a quiet evening at home with Joanne. Just the two of us. Just the three of you. <laughs> Maybe. Hi, Dad. Hi, Rob. Bye, Dad. See you Monday. Monday? Where are you going? Well, I'm going to babysit for Borden and Eileen. Oh, fine. And Joanne is going to help me. Give the two of us a chance to know each other. Let's meet the challenges of married life. Oh, fine. Rob! <laughs> Joanne will just be by tonight for dinner. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Well. Hello, dear. Uh, come in, dear. For me? Well, you would look cute in them. Well, now, uh, I wonder what I would look cute in. Diaper. I think said I'd better pick up another dozen. Mm -hmm. But when the timer went off, I turned the oven down, like you said. Oh, you set the table. That was sweet. I'll take over now. Did you get a lot done today? Uh, yes, dear. I find this a quiet, peaceful little island, away from the squirrel cage. Here's tonight's paper you asked for, dear. Well, thank you, dear. I thought after dinner maybe we could sit back and put our feet up and catch up on the news. Maybe read editorials to each other. I was going to surprise you after dinner. But I think you need these now. Well, well, what have we here? Slippers. How about that? They're the same kind Eileen buys for Borden. Mm -hmm. He wears them every evening for C&D. C&D? Coffee and dessert. Eileen says they call it the C&D hour. Isn't that wonderful?
You know, uh, the difference between a happy marriage and an unhappy one is communication, dear. Communication? You know, you're right. You're a very observant boy. Man. Well, you just sit down and relax, and I'll get dinner on, dearest. May I help, dearest? Oh, no. I'll let you pour when it's time for C and D. <laughs> Are you sure Robbie, that for the fifteenth time, the safety pins are closed. Oh. Maybe he's hungry. Well, I just fed him two hours ago, and you just gave him another bottle. Well, maybe he's sleepy. And stop flapping around the room. These slippers will fall off if I don't flap them. <laughs> Boy, that baby did nothing but sleep till you got here. Are you implying he's crying because of me? I'm not implying anything. I'll tell you what, uh, why don't we give him a warm bath? Maybe that'll quiet him down. Okay, I'll try anything. There we go, Jimmy. How do we get the water? Mm -hmm. Oh, Joanne? Uh, Joanne, what are we bathing? Right in front of you. That's the bassinet. Oh, okay. Just a second, I'll help you find it. Robbie? Oh, uh, coming. Okay, make sure the water's lukewarm. Okay. Is it Robbie? What? Where, where's Jimmy? I put him on the bassinet. What for? He has to be here someplace. You couldn't have just gone out of the room. Well, don't just stand there in those stupid slippers. Do something. Oh, so I was standing right here with the baby. I hit him. Oh, yeah. I, I was looking underneath for the... And I put my foot on here. The... Oh, I... <laughs> oh, Robbie, that was a rotten trick. It wasn't supposed to be. Well, it was incredibly fat-headed. Fat-headed? Well, you weren't doing so great yourself. Oh. Well, don't forget, you're the one that's supposed to be taking care of the baby. Can't you do something about that screaming? Yours or his? Does it? I'm going home to my mother. <laughs> Who's writing to you tonight, Arnie? I don't know. I haven't signed it yet. Ernie, why do you keep writing letters from other people? I don't know. I guess it just makes me feel like I was somebody. It's all right to be somebody, but you want to be everybody. Now, look, I got something I want to do tonight. Can I count on you guys not to break up the joint? Sure. I got to get a stamp for this so I can receive it in time to take it to school Monday. <laughs> Sounds logical. <laughs> You guys behave yourself till your dad gets here. Holy Toledo. An orphan of the storm. I better get you inside. Charlie, for taking little Jimmy in. He took two trips from the car to get all this stuff. I was better off talking to Ernie about his letters. Do you mind telling a mixed-up sailor what this is all about? 
But didn't I tell you about spending the weekend at Borden Gray's apartment? Oh, you mean that married guy? I didn't know they had a sprout. <laughs> Cute kid. Reminds me of a boatswain's mate I knew in Singapore. I couldn't handle him alone, so I brought him over here. Now, this is all this baby stuff. Blankets and diapers and bottles and bottle brushes and a sterilizer. And now it's Betty bedtime. Now, now, now look, you're not going to put this kid to bed on an empty stomach, are you? Oh, my gosh, the formula. And it's feeding time. I left it in the refrigerator. I'll be right back. Hey, hey, Bobby, wait, wait. <laughs> That's what I like, a family that talks things over. Uncle Charlie, I'll be back. Hey, where'd that baby come from? Look, I haven't got time to talk. I promised Elsie Matt to take her to the hospital to see her sister. Now, Robbie will be right back, and your dad will be here soon. Well, yeah, but what do I do? If the kid cries, just jiggle the basket. And if anything else happens, ad lib. Hi, baby. Do you want something to play with or something? Hey. I'll let you play with my wristwatch if you promise not to spit on it or anything. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Ernie. Hey, Chip, you know how many games Cy Young won between 1890 and 1911? Tell them that Cy Young writes me. Cy Young's not going to write to anybody. And now take care of this baby. i got a date with Evelyn Crandall. Robbie will be back in a minute. Hey, it's a lie. Yeah, and if he starts to cry, jiggle the basket. <laughs> a baby of her home. Boy, where will the president hears about this? <laughs> now, don't worry, baby. I was new around here just a little while ago, too. You'll like it when you get used to it. <laughs> Tell you what, baby, I'll read you from my record book. Hi, Ernie. I was just reading this to him. Did you know that Walter Johnson pitched 56 consecutive scoreless innings? No, I didn't. Ernie, uh, who is this? I don't know yet, but I've been calling him Baby. Where, where'd he come from? I got him from Chip. From Chip? And Chip got it from Uncle Charlie. Well, where'd Uncle Charlie get it from? Uh, Robbie? Of course. Well, do you happen to know if anybody had him before, Robbie? Well, sure. Robbie had to get him from somebody. Uh, didn't it filter through to you who he is? No. But I think we ought to call him something else besides baby. <laughs> Seems healthy enough. Uh, uh, in case it's a girl, maybe we ought to call it Connie Mack. That way we can't go wrong. You don't know if it's a boy or a girl? No. Uh, as we'll find out any minute, you know. Wait a minute. Mind on the basket? Chip said he'd make him stop crying. Oh, he did, huh? <laughs> Maybe Chip knows something about the baby. Ernie, uh, what are we supposed to do? Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, he's quiet now. Or, uh, she is. Uh, or is. <laughs> Whoops, uh, Ernie, you better jiggle the basket in the Daddy won't stop. Well, then, yeah, let's uh, try this. It usually works. Here. There we are. There. There. How about that? See, Dad, that's a neat idea. How'd you ever think of that? Oh, just uh, lucky, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you better uh, do a little more, Ernie. Hello. Norman? Oh, yeah, just a minute. There he is for you, Norman. Ma. No, I can't come out and play. I have a baby. Connie Mack. I got him or her from Chip. Now, Chip didn't want it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Every kid in the block has gubbies, but I'm the only one with a real live baby. Okay. See ya. Hey, Ernie, uh, if you want to go out and play or write a letter to yourself, you go right ahead. I'll stay here with the baby. No, thanks, Dad. I like it here with you. 
A baby is a good father and son project. Anyway, I only write letters to attract attention. Tonight, I'm getting plenty of attention. Say, Dad, can I have your keys just in case he starts bawling again? Oh, you have the keys, aren't you? No, I don't. I came back to you when I answered the phone. No, I don't think you did. Oh, I must have left him in the crib. Oh. Dad, they're not here. You don't suppose... Don't suppose what, eh? That he, she, or he ain't ate them. Oh, of course not. They must be in here someplace if you left him there. Dad, it's not here. Wait a minute, Bernie. What are you doing? If you ain't the keys, I'll hear them rattle. Oh, no, just, 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 just take it easy. Let's look around here. Then. I don't see them on the floor here. Eh? I promised Chip I'd take care of it. What are you, I'm going to call the hospital. Oh, now, wait a minute, Ernie. Don't panic. <laughs> Your father, huh? Boy, what a relief. <laughs> I didn't think he, she, or it ate them. Hey, hmm? maybe threw them over there. Uh, yeah, maybe. Boy, what an arm. Let's change his name from Connie Mack to Sandy Kofi. Hi, Dad. Just in time for the six o'clock feeding. Rob, would you tell me one thing? Just how did Ernie wind up with a baby? Ernie? Well, I left Jimmy with Uncle Charlie. Jimmy? Where do you ever get a name like that? From Mr. and Mrs. Gray. They're a couple of married teenagers. Joanne and I were babysitting for them, and then, uh, well, Joanne got fed up with married life and went home to her mother. Joanne got fed up with married life? Uh, yeah. Dad, I'd like to get your opinion. Do you think I'm old enough to get married? What would you do if my answer was yes? Well, I might never respect your opinion again. <laughs> Yeah. Uncle, help me, Rob. Let me get a letter from Dr. Spock. <laughs>